Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. Today we're going to talk about something called function overloading. So let me just comment these. There are two things that you might get confused within your programming life. So this doesn't really just apply to C++. Uh, it applies to a bunch of other stuff as well. Um, let me see. So what you want to do is you want to just learn function overloading versus function overriding now there are going to be two of these and this might be called shadowing as well overshadowing uh, overshadowing sometimes you, you might find this word but it's overriding and overloading so the, what are the differences let me just explain that quickly as as quickly as i can so overloading means that the function's name is the same all right so there's the header the function header is the signature the function header is the function's signature all right so if there is a difference in this header you're basically making a different function so if i make two functions here called int add int a int b and then i have a return a plus B so this is a unique function signature right this this header is like our name if there is a letter difference something is different or then it's gonna be whole different thing right so let me just make another int add or let me make a, a float add int a or float a float B now it does the same thing I hope I'm explaining this all right. It does the same thing, but the signature is different because we're using floats here instead. The types have changed. So that what types you have of the parameters in the return statement and how many parameters you have, that changes the signature. The name can still remain the same, but the signature is different. The whole function's signature is different. So the computer can differentiate between these two. And there are two different functions with the same name. But if you have the same input parameters and the same return type, then it's going to complain because it's going to be the exact same. The signature is going to match. You don't want that. You don't want to define two functions that are exactly the same. In this case, you want these to have the same name. So the user, the programmer, has an easy time. Depending on the inputs, the function will change. Uh, but you have a different signature you don't have the computer complaining so if I create a system pause here as usual and then I just go ahead and I say std cout add 1 and 2 and I just go ahead and do this a new line whoops can't type today there we go then it's obviously going to use this. So the computer chooses for you a little bit which one it uses depending on the input parameters we're using because it's going to choose which one of these we're going to use. So now I input it two integers. We're automatically going to use this one. The computer knows. All right. So if I run this, we won't get any, any issues. Um, just like that, three. All right. And let me just go ahead and say std c out high from int add function and then I'm just gonna just to make it clear because you don't always get the decimal and then here I'm going to use high from float add function just like that so if I run this again we should get the first one high from int add function and if I say 2.f, 1.f here, then I'm going to get high from float add function. See? So it, when I gave it two floats here, the computer knew that this is the function I need to use. And it automatically did that. So this is function overloading. All right. Function overriding is something we're going to talk about later, but I, I want you to know about it right now. And it has to do with classes. And then the function signatures are exactly the same. 
they're gonna be exactly the same but it's gonna more depend on the object you're creating and this is really complicated for now you probably won't understand all of it um, but don't worry too much about it. just know that there's a difference in function overloading you create two functions with the same name but different input parameters and different return types to differentiate the signature and in overriding you have the exact same signature but the computer will still choose depending on the object what function to use okay so an example would be if you have an item class in a game and then you have a weapon and armor both are items so what you can do in C++ and object oriented languages is that you can have something called inheritance and we'll get into that later but weapon and armor are gonna inherit from item so they're both items an item is gonna have a function called uh, maybe equip right so that function equip is just gonna be there it's gonna have its signature it's gonna be like a prototype and then weapon and armor are both gonna have an equip function from item but they're gonna have they're gonna do different things depending on they're gonna go into different slots right but they're still gonna have the exact same signature so the computer is gonna check what you're trying to equip a weapon or an armor and it's gonna call the appropriate equip function for that object so that's something you can do later on polymorphism and, and inheritance so it's good to know that right now uh, but you don't have to think about it too much so let's keep overloading here let's make more add functions let's make a add function float add now float a like that so you want to just um, for some reason or let's make a float a float b and let's try to just make the exact same function it's gonna complain I just want to show you the error it's gonna say nope uh, error in function definition or declaration um, already has a body float add already has a body so it found an issue that these are exactly the same but if I make a float C here a B plus C add function 2 then it's not gonna complain because this I changed the signature of it hi from float add function now I need to just add one more parameter here another 1.f or something and then it's automatically gonna go to the float function 2 and I'm gonna get the result from there so what happens if you switch this up I think in this case it's gonna automatically yeah it saw how many uh, how many parameters I gave it and it automatically switched as it as it saw fit but if I take this away let's just experiment together here I'm not completely sure yeah so it complained because there is none none of these add functions takes one integer and a float all right so either you give it you need to know a little bit what you're doing here so in this case it knew that there's only one function with three parameters so I'm giving it three parameters and I gave it an int so it it used this function still and it because there's only one function with three parameters the computer knew to use this one and then it converted this to a float okay converted it to a float and then called the function but in the case of two parameters it's confused because there's two add functions with two parameters and it's not completely sure which one to use if I make one integer and one float you see the the problem here it doesn't really know so in that case it's complaining it's like there's no function with this please just, just go to hell but if I make a function a int function whatever add and I give it a float a and an integer b and I say copy this in hi from float hi from float int add function so I'm gonna give it a float and I'm gonna give it an integer so now it has that case now it knows that hi from float int add function so now it knows that there is a function with this signature that I can call see how many add functions I'm making here it's insane right it's crazy so I thought we'd just go ahead and remove these and I'm gonna include the file from last video include uh, so please go ahead and watch the last video if you haven't my math let me see wait my math functions dot h so basically I'll show you the file all you have to do is create an a header file please watch the old video because I explain all of these things there but um, 
if you if you haven't really you just want to keep going all you have to do is create a header file right click add new item and then create a header file dot h name it my math functions dot h just like that add all this stuff just copy paste all of this and you're good to go so this is kind of going to be like a a black box approach to to math functions so we're going to give the user all the user has to do is include this file and they'll get a bunch of these um, awesome math functions that they can use and uh, they don't really have to think about all of these functions and how they look inside all they have to know is that all they have to do is include it and then they'll get a bunch of functions that they can use so now add works here um, so what you can do in this case I won't fill this out completely is you can make a bunch of different um, like helper functions here for yourself that you can use in several of your programs and specifically add and subtraction is not really important obviously because all you have to do is a plus b so it's it's not really relevant to us but um, it's not really useful in a sense but still it's just an example uh, but you can play around with this you can use overloading in these files as well uh, return a plus b so I hope you see what's happening here the user doesn't really need to know what's going on because outside in my tutorial file here if I use the float function like this the functionality it's gonna just automatically find that in this file here or it's gonna use the integer version doesn't really matter so this is a multiplication function you can you can create you can just flesh these out if you want um, float division uh, float b return a divided by b for example and then you can make that if statement here if you want if b equals zero return um, what well, should we return minus one point f maybe just like that just to symbolize that some error occurred um, like that see how it didn't use C out in here because we didn't include IO stream in, in this function you don't want to include a bunch of libraries in these helper functions because it, it might con conflict with other things so I can't use C out here so I have to find another method to kind of return an error just like that you should use exception handling which we'll talk about later um, but for example that's a bunch of things I can make another integer division function int a int b um, if b equals 0 return 0 no minus 1 return a divided by b so this is kind of a um, yeah just a helper library that I'm making you can flesh this out as much as you want you can you can you can make weird functions like add 4 right and then int add 4 float a float or int a int a a int b int c int d and then return a plus b plus c plus d you get that you get the gist of it you can make a another one of these for for floats and so on and so on so you can make as many functions as you want and I, you can call that here add four one one two 30, 39, something like that, and just run this and it shouldn't be any problems. 43. See how you don't have to think about what functions there are in here. You can just flesh this out and use it in different files. And you can use function overloading to create different functions with different types, which helps you out a lot. So I can I can just actually just call this add as well, just for the overloading sake like that so you can add four numbers and then you can make one for three numbers and so on and so on just go around play with it see that you can uh, you really master this and read a little more about function overloading versus overriding I really I really recommend you to read a book on C++ as well not just watch the videos because you get all these small little details that I can't give you within this short time but I'm trying to give you as much as I can um, but if I miss something and some of you notice it please just tell me and I'll correct it. But thank you for watching as always. I hope you learned something. Uh, I know I babble on a lot per usual. Um, but yeah, best of luck with learning. Keep learning. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.